myself dr soumya junayad senior lecturer department of conservative dentistry anno dental college the topic today i'll be talking is on access cavity preparation access is the first and most important phase of root canal treatment a well designed access preparation is essential for a good endodontic result so mainly there are four procedures that's a good access cavity preparation a good working length proper cleaning and shaping and a three dimensional obturation which determine, determines the success of a root canal treatment so before talking about that we'll talk about the morphology of the root canal system it includes the pulp chamber and the root canal the pulp chamber is on the coronal portion whereas the root canal is towards the radicular portion in the pulp chamber there's pulp horn so this pulp horn is just below the cusp so number of cusp determines the number of pulp horns then there are root canal orifices which is the entry into the root canal space then the furcation canals can be seen towards which the, that are the accessory canals which goes towards the furcation area then lateral canals then uh, apical foramen and accessory foramen and in between that the space is called as the apical delta coming to the objectives of access cavity preparation the first and foremost purpose is a uh, straight line access to the apical foramen or to the initial curvature of the canal so it is very important to have a straight line access into the up, uh, in the apical to the apical foramen or till the flow portion till there is a curvature when you do a access opening this have to be considered then to locate all root canal orifice then to conserve sound tooth structure there are various principle of access cavity preparation which includes outline form convenience form removal of remaining carious dentin and defective restoration and toilet of the cavity we'll uh, discuss each topic in detail coming to outline form uh, it is established by mechanically projecting the internal anatomy to the external surface so the internal anatomy have to be projected into the outside then only we can do a thorough access opening or a uh, that is the main intention by a access opening so that we it helps in proper cleaning and shaping and the location of the canal then there are mainly three factors that regulate the outline form that is the size of the pulp chamber so the size of pulp chamber is not similar in all the cases so in case of younger pulp it is more extensive whereas in case of older patient the pulp space is very less there are more chances of calcification the hence the pulp space become narrow then the shape of the pulp chamber it is not always similar in all the tooth depending on the tooth structure the pulp chamber differs like in case of anterior tooth it is triangular shape in case of premolar it is oval or ovoid and in case of molar it is triangular in shape then comes to the number and direction of root canal so as same as the pulp chamber it is not similar in all the tooth same way in case of molar there can be 3 to 4 uh, root canals then in case of premolar there are two canals or single root then in case of anterior there are single roots like that now coming to the convenience form it is a it is the form given to the access cavity preparation to improve the visibility instrumentation and obturation of the root canal by providing a straight line access from occlusal surface to the apical foramen so when you have a proper convenience form it becomes easy for a person to work on the tooth the benefits are unobstructed access to the orifices direct access to the apical foramina complete authority over the instruments expansion to accommodate filling techniques then the removal of remaining caries dentin and defective restoration as we all know any pending caries can lead to failure so the major reasons are eliminate bacteria elimination of discolored tooth structures and elimination of the possibility uh, of coronal leakage so if there is any remaining caries ultimately it leads to failure even if you did a very good root canal then they have to be removed then coming to the toilet of the cavity all caries calcified debris and necrotic material should be removed by irrigation from the pulp chamber before radicular preparation is begun to avoid unobstructed root canal so if there is any obstruction or any calcification we should never push it into the canal so once the access opening is done we have to flush it using a good irrigation method 
coming to the instrument, there are various instruments which will be used in during the process. That is low speed contra-angle, high speed contra-angle, that is the aerotor and the micromotor. Then BG-16, endodontic explorer, round burst. Uh, there, it comes in three size, two, three, and four, depending on the tip diameter. Then there is safe and tapered burst. It has a rounded tip, which helps in preventing perforation. Then transmetal burst, endo Z burst, and tapered stone with round end. Then there is axis burst, uh, endo axis burst, sorry. Uh, it has a round uh, tip at the end so that it helps in a good axis opening and prevent any uh, further, what do you say, uh, the errors will be reduced by using such bursts. Then there are pulp out, pulp, pulp out bursts. Then next is uh, ultrasonics, which helps in a very good axis opening and to remove any obstructions. Then surgical operating microscope, which gives a very good visibility. So. It is always said that you should visualize it in order to have a better treatment. So a microscope is the best method to do it with a proper visualization and also loops can also help. Coming to axis cavity preparation in anterior tooth. Now we'll discuss each tooth separately. The outline form of central and lateral incisors are triangular with the base of the triangle towards the incisal edge and the apex towards the cingulum as you can see in the diagram. Coming to the steps, suppose this is the root canal, uh, like tooth anatomy of uh, the morphology of the tooth. First, you have to uh, segregate it into quadrants and you have to gain the axis to the middle of the middle third of the palatal canal. Okay. You should, uh, otherwise, what happens? There are more chances for perforations, etc. So, approaching in this direction, we can reach the pulp very easy. And it all depends on the angulation of the tooth also. Second, initial entrance is prepared with a round burr at a high speed, which is operated at a right angle to the long axis of the tooth. So initially you will use a round burr. You have to just enter into the enamel, okay, not more. And then the burr is positioned in a 45 degree. Once you get that entry, you tilt the burr in a 45 degree and come in long axis of the tooth. And once you enter the pulp chamber, you get a feel of a dip, okay? Because since pulp chamber is soft, you'll get a dip. And then the removal of the pulp chamber, that is the de-roofing have to be done in order to get a, a enough space for the irrigant and also the instrumentation and the removal of the lingual shoulders have to be completed. So this is the preparation that we get after a good axis opening in case of a central incisor and a lateral incisor. Now coming to canine, the procedures are similar, but the outline form is oval, okay? Now, there are various errors that occurs during the axis cavity preparation. The first and foremost is gorging. So, in case when there is, uh, when the 29 degree inclination, labial inclination is not observed, there can be gorging which occurs on the labial walls, as you can see in the diagram. And when there is a, uh, when you uh, not uh, recognize the 16 degree mesial inclination, it leads to gorging of the distal wall. Gorging means the additional removal of the dentine structure, okay, uh, which is away from the pulp. So if there is gorging, what happens is the instrument goes and get stuck in that area and instrumentation becomes very difficult. And also you're compromising with the strength of the tooth. The next thing is perforation, which can occur when the angulation of the tooth is not followed properly. Then there are more chances of missed canal also if the axis opening is not proper. If you don't remove the uh, unroof or deroof the pulp chamber, you can miss the canal. Okay, so you have to deroof the pulp chamber. Next is discoloration. This is caused mainly when the caries which is present is not removed completely, or the pulp uh, pulp tissue which is present in the root canal is not removed completely. It leads to discoloration. And next is ledge formation. Uh, the, usually the canals are not always straight. Majority of the time, there is curvature in the canal. Hence, you have to pre-curve the instrument and place it into the canal. If you push the uh, file straightly, it can lead to ledge formation. Now, coming to the premolars, the outline form in upper is oval and lower canal, it is ovoid. In the maxillary premolars, there are mainly two can or canals uh, or the orifices. One is on the buccal and one is on the palatal. But there are variations which can be further seen. 
the preparation is the initial preparation is made parallel to the long axis of the tooth the ex in the exact center of of the central group you can directly uh, place the bird parallel to the long axis and enter into the pulse space but the instrument have to keep, be kept in the center the round bird is used to open the pulse chamber uh, the bird will feel that a drop will be felt once the drop is felt you can see once it enters the soft tissue it you feel a dip or a drop that sensation can be felt then after that the endodontic explorer is used to locate the orifices after um, unroofing or deroofing the orifices have to be located and the round, round bird is used to deroof the pulp chamber okay the deroofing is completely necessary or else there are chances for um, incomplete removal of the pulp space uh, pulp and also missed canal chances are also more then the finishing and flaring of the cavity can be done using a round end tapered burs in case of upper there are usually two canals in case of lower there are usually one canal but the variation as i said is always present the errors which are caused mainly is under extended axis cavity when you are preparing it very minimally there can be more uh, under extension which leads to difficulty in obturation cleaning and shaping and incomplete removal of the pulp and also in case of over extended axis cavity you are going for a compromise of the tooth structure then coming next is perforation it, if you don't you are not familiar with the anatomy of the tooth it can lead to perforation okay so the anatomy of the tooth structure and the angulation should always be recorded then only go for with the and at uh, tooth preparation uh, root canal preparation then failure to locate the third canals as i said there can be variation in all the tooth forms there can be various extra additional canals which can be seen so if you are not doing a proper access opening it can lead to missing of the additional canals this are various old age techniques which were used these are the just images this is how tiring it was now things have eased up after the instrument various instruments which have been introduced now coming to molar there is upper and lower that is the maxillary and mandibular the shape is almost trapezoidal so in case of upper there are uh, mesiobuccal canals uh, distobuccal canal and palatal canal which are commonly seen but it is said that mb2s are also very common okay so search for the mb2 which will be present between the mb1 and a straight when a line is drawn straight line from the mesiobuccal to the palatal it will be on just a little ahead to the uh, into that okay so that point have to be searched then the point of entry is marked in this tooth can you see the round uh, orange shape that is the point of entry and mesiobuccal is located under the mesiobuccal cusp tip mesiobuc mb2 is located mesial and palatal to the mb1 then distobuccal is located under the central fossa usually and palatal is located at the junction of mesio palatal cusp and oblique ridge point of entry is the center of the occlusal table as shown in the diagram in case of lower the point of entry is the central fossa same and there is mesiobuccal is located under the mesiobuccal cusp tip mesiolingual is located at the same line lingual to the central fissure and distal is located distal to the central fossa in this also the procedure is same like premolars uh, but the entry through should be done through the central uh, central portion so that once you get the dip you have to go for decoronation uh, uh, deep roofing okay so coming to the errors under extended axis cavity and over extended as you can see in under extended you can only locate one or two canals but when you extend the canal then only or unroof uh, the pulp chamber then only you will be able to get a complete canal orifices or else there are more chances of missing the orifices then over extended cavity same there can be more compromise with the uh, strength of the tooth then perforation and failure to look, uh, locate the root canals this are the main things then crown perforation and root perforations which can be seen if uh, access opening is not proper then axioms of pulp anatomy the two orifices of the maxillary first premolars are further on the buccal and the orifices of the mesiobuccal canal uh, and the molars are well under the mesiobuccal cusp and the outline form should be widely extended into the cusp we had just discussed before how the shapes are i'm just going through it 
then the orifice of the palatal canal is in the maxillary molar is not far from the lingual but in actually in the center of the mesial half of the tooth and the orifice of the distal distal buccal canal in the maxillary molar is not far from the distal buccal but it is almost buccal to the palatal orifice same thing i had discussed earlier also this is the thing in mandibular uh the orifice of the distal canal in the mandibular molar is not too far from the distal but it is actually in the exact center of the tooth and the orifice of the mesiolingual canal in the mandibular molar is not far to the mesiolingual but is almost mesial to the distal orifice now coming to the laws of pulp change by anatomy first is law of centrality uh the floor of the pulp chamber is always located in the center of the tooth at the level of cj okay that is law of centrality the floor will be almost at the cent at, at the level of cj and location of cj the distance from the external surface to the clinical crown to the wall of the pulp chamber is the same throughout the circumference of the tooth at the level of cj making the cj the most cons consistent remark uh, landmark for locating the position of the pulp chamber then first law of symmetry except for the maxillary molars the canal orifices are equidistant from a line drawn in a mesiolingual direction through the center of the pulp chamber so when you draw a straight line the canals will be equidistant other than maxillary molars and second law of symmetry is except for the maxillary molars canal orifice lies on a line perpendicular to the line drawn in a mesiobuccal direction across the so when you draw a straight line the canals are always perpendicular to the central line which is drawn okay when on the meso distal direction then law of color change the pulp chamber floor is always darker than the walls so that helps in location of the canal then first law of orifice location the orifice of the root canals are always located at the junction of the walls and the floor so uh, orifices can be seen as a junction okay the floor and the wall uh, that junction there will be orifice which can be seen then second law of orifice location the orifice of the root canals are of always located at an, at the angle in the floor wall junctions then third law of orifice location the orifice of the root canals are always located at the terminus of the root developmental fusion lines thank you